Hi, I'm Richard Hannon. I'm the Deputy Regional Director here in Region 1. And today you're going to be hearing from a number of your colleagues and leaders about surrogate species. What they are, what they're not, why now? Well, let me just tell you what I think. I think this whole initiative, surrogate species, I'm excited about it because it, one, I think it's going to give us a forum for better connecting with our public. The public understands wildlife, they love wildlife, they appreciate wildlife. And what do we talk about? We often talk about the papers we write or the recovery plans that we've, we've crafted or biological opinions that we've written. The public isn't excited about that. They're excited about wildlife, wild creatures and wild places. When we identify surrogate species, we're, we are going to recapture the public's imagination and reconnection with what we do and why we do it because of their love of wildlife. So now join me as some of your friends, colleagues, and leadership talk to you about surrogate species and what they mean to them. Surrogate species is a new way to think about and manage our nation's wildlife legacy. It focuses on a representative group of wildlife species to conserve all wildlife. Just as there are species whose status represents a barometer on the ecological health of our environment, there are also species that if managed to healthy populations and long-term viability, give us confidence that other species will likewise be sustained. With regional responsibility for hundreds of migratory bird species, planning for surrogate species means we can take a more focused approach to research and monitoring needed for landscape scale conservation. For wildlife sport fish restoration, surrogate species means a stronger, healthier tie to the disciplined approach and practical application of SHC shown by the states in conserving common species. I think surrogate species will allow us to not just look at issues from a different perspective perhaps, but it will allow us to interact with our partners in a different way. But it will also, probably most importantly, allow us to communicate with Congress, with the public, with OMB about the issues that we're dealing with, the challenges we face, and also the needs that we have in order to address those issues. I was uh, particularly gratified in reading the draft guidance, the amount of emphasis that's put on evaluation and monitoring, uh, particularly in light in the amount of renewed emphasis we have on those types of activities in the National Wildlife Refuge System. What I like about surrogate species is, or the approach of surrogate species is, as I've grown older, I guess I've become more of a realist. And I think we can all agree that the reality is that it's become harder and harder for us to accomplish our mission of conserving fish and wildlife and the habitats on which they depend. So what I like about the surrogate species approach is that it doesn't tell us to ignore the reality of the conservation challenges that we have, but rather to embrace that and find a way to be as effective as we can within those challenges. So one of our challenges in this region in the service overall is that we're dealing with these very complex landscapes, lots of species, lots of impacts, and I think it's very difficult for us not only in terms of trying to communicate with the public, with our stakeholders, but just even from the science side to really understand what's happening on the landscape and how we're affecting that and what we can be doing to better fish and wildlife populations. And that's where surrogate species can really be a powerful tool for us. Region 1's Office of Law Enforcement can focus its efforts on illegal activities affecting certain species to create a ripple effect of protection and coverage for many species. I think it's going to be easy to sit back and say surrogate species isn't going to work, it's going to be too difficult, or we already do it. But if we think that way, we're really losing an opportunity to look for better ways of what we do and to articulate to the public of why it is we're doing it. We come to this job and we have so much passion, and yet when we talk to the public, we use jargon, we use acronyms, and we retreat into Section 4 of the ESA. And that makes it really hard for the public to both understand and support what it is we do. So, I have some questions, I'm looking forward to being a part of this, and I'm looking forward to doing something bigger and something that is possibly revolutionary for this agency. The thing to remember about surrogate species is 
This is just another step in what we've been doing with strategic habitat conservation. And Region 1 has been a leader in strategic habitat conservation for a very, very long time. And so by linking to a surrogate species, my hope is that we can show the public what that species is about at the same time as we show them what we're doing with that species and what we're doing to affect habitats and special places that people may care about. The thing I'm really encouraging people to do is read the guidance, um, understand what's in there, and comment on what it means for them and what it means for their jobs so that we can make the guidance better. The surrogate species will give us the opportunity for greater conservation success. Selecting, tracking, and assessing our actions will help inform us as well as build public interest in our trust resources. The critical thinking that will be applied to this initiative will help clarify our goals, challenge our assumptions, and help us formulate actions to improve the status of our resources. This is a scientific process, but it's really the human element that appeals to me. In these challenging fiscal times, we have the opportunity to speak to the American public in terms that really inspire civic involvement. This month we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the book Silent Spring. In the face of immense public scrutiny, Rachel Carson talked about science in a way that resonated with the American public. So 50 years from now, will our citizens look back at the steps we took and appreciate that we also rose to meet our challenges? You have the opportunity to get involved. You have the opportunity to make comments, to read the technical guidance, and to shape this process into a, a conservation success that will last for generations. The service is placing greater emphasis on strategic habitat conservation. As is all of the business world right now, being strategic and being adaptive. And one of the elements of strategic habitat conservation is having explicit biological objectives and trying to meet them. And surrogate species is a way that we can do that. And where in the past the service has applied that model of surrogate species, it works. It's working on sage grouse, which we're looking at across the entire landscapes of the Western United States now, to find a way, working together, land managers and others, to conserve that species, and in doing so, deliver benefit for that landscape. So surrogate species isn't new. And when we invest in that model, we achieve conservation success. But we can't do that for thousands of species. We can't use that model for everything that we care about in wildlife. So we're going to choose surrogates. And those surrogates are going to help us deliver conservation for a vibrant, healthy landscape, the remarkable landscapes of the Pacific Northwest, Hawaii, and the Pacific Islands. Those landscapes are in our hands at a time when we might have fewer resources to address them. Let's be effective, let's be efficient, and let's be inspired that we can do this. And because we're Region 1, we can do it with excellence.